What's going on, YouTube folks out there, Facebook friends, people of Black Junction TV, if you get to see this. My name is Ademir, and this is the Hard Black Truth. And I'm making this video, as you can see from the title, where you have evidence of police colluding and working with white supremacists in order to go after and prosecute members of the Antifa, Antifa, anti-fascist, uh, anti-racist, or uh, they would love to call themselves. Now, as a black man, excuse me, as a black person, I do realize that Antifa is by and large a mostly non-black organization. And when it comes to situations like that, where you have uh, basically whites fighting against other whites, as a black man, I'm, I'm more inclined to stay out of that fight. I personally feel that, you know, I, I wasn't invited to the party. Therefore, you know, I'm not going to join in that. There are some black folks who are part of the Antifa group and, one of them, it was even noted that they, they put up a black fist and officers noted that that salute, as they called it, showed an intent to, you know, cause and wreak havoc. At the end of the day, this ultimately shows that the police force has by and large uh, been filled with white supremacists, people who do not care for blacks, they do not care for equal rights, they do not care for justice and liberty. You know, the, as an officer, you would think people would join in order to fight off the bad guys, but these are individuals who feel that black people are the bad guys. And the fact that they reached out to white supremacists, I have to ask myself, would you or could you ever show me an instance where any organization, any police organization uh, communicated on this kind of level with any Muslim group? I, I, I think you would be hard pressed to find such evidence. But here they're writing emails back and forth. They're letting individuals know how they're going to go out of their way to try to protect their rights or and not even protect their rights, but protect their identities. Even they're going to make suggestions to make sure that these white supremacists aren't singled out, aren't exposed. You know, this is this is not the kind of thing that you would see afforded to any black activists. And I used uh, the example of, of Muslims earlier because you know damn well that that would not happen. But when it comes to their own, much like Donald Trump stated, these are very fine people. And what, what, what scares me more than anything is that we are moving forward and we're progressing into a new reality where white supremacy and white nationalism is going to be considered a mainstream and normal thing to do. And it's a shame because for all of the ruckus and stomping and praying and marching that black folks have done, we're not being afforded any more rights. We're not being given any benefit of the doubt. No one is out there trying to help us. No one is out there trying to make sure that we're taken care of. Um, as a matter of fact, we get told that we are causing more harm than good by our positions, by our complaining. But these white nationalists, oh, they have no choice. They've been put into a corner. They're going to have to fight back. And we have to help them because after all, they are under attack 24 seven, except that the folks that are helping them aren't 
good law abiding citizens. These are wretched devils that so happen to be armed with badges and a gun. Don't get me wrong. Not all police officers are bad. OK, there I said it. But we have enough of them that harbor anti-black sentiments. We have enough of them that would readily and willingly go out and support these white supremacists. And finally, we have enough of them that will sit idly by while these other ignorant, racist, white supremacist leaning officers do just that. You know, the Jews go after German soldiers who fought in World War II and they don't show any leniency. They, they, they do what, what, what George Bush adopted and that was the line uh, of saying that it will not be enough to say that you were just following orders. See, they go after theirs and it doesn't matter whether individuals were just following orders. It doesn't matter if that was the acceptable thing to do for that society. They go after them. And what we are seeing is a situation where black people cannot act in the same way that the Jews are acting towards these, the, the, these Nazis that they're still hunting down to this day. I know that example is going to take many of you back, but it had to be said because we have too many officers who sit idly by and they know that they are partnered with a white supremacist. They know that that officer that sits across from them in another cubicle writing their reports harbors anti-African-American uh, sentiments and are probably lying on every report that they push. But they don't say anything. They don't do anything. They allow it to take place. And I understand that the police department and working for any kind of agency across this country, you might not want to be that person who's a whistleblower. But at some point, we are going to have to make sacrifices. We have enough people who will serve and, and, and they will get their pension and then they will talk. But by then, nobody gives a damn what it is that they have to say because they're no longer relevant. They're no longer on the force. You can't make an example of them. But at the same time, you, you, you can't use them as a, a as someone to validate what it is that we see in all of these reports that basically state that the police departments across this country have been flooded with racist and white supremacists. And there is enough of them where they carry out their own brand of justice and, and they are aided and abetted in doing so. But you guys let me know what you think about all of this. Those are my thoughts. Lung Yao One here. Peace. Mm -hmm.